In this video, I want to provide a proof of the Cauchy Schwartz inequality. So, what actually is the Cauchy Schwartz inequality? Well, first off, we need to define some sequences. I'm going to define a sequence of xi as a sequence of x1, x2, all the way through to xn. And then we also define a sequence of another variable, which I'm going to call yi, which is the sequence y1, y2, all the way through to yn. So after I've defined both of these sequences, we can actually write down what the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality says. It says that the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi squared times the sum from i equals 1 to n of yi squared has got to be greater than or equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi times yi all squared. So notice that we're squaring the entire sum here, whereas in these sums on the left-hand side, we're summing together each of the elements squared. So written down like this, it's not immediately clear what uses the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality actually has. But it actually has a number of uses, particularly in statistics. In order to realise this, imagine that x has a sample mean which is zero. And imagine that y also has a sample mean which is zero. And I know that this might not necessarily be realistic of sort of everyday variables, but you can imagine transforming to a situation whereby the new variable did actually have a sample mean of zero. When we assume these two things, that the sample mean of x and the sample mean of y are both zero, we can actually recover something quite useful from the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. To do this, what we do is we divide this sum of xi squared through by n. And now this first expression looks like the sample variance of xi. Then if we do the same thing to the yi term, so dividing that through by n, then this second expression on the left hand side actually looks like the sample variance of y. But because we've divided both of these sides through by uh, 1 over n, or times it through by 1 over n, we need to do exactly the same thing to the right hand side. So we have to divide the right hand side through by n squared. But we can actually do that just by putting it inside the parenthesis, because when I square out this parenthesis, I get a 1 over n squared. And now this term inside the parenthesis just looks like the sample covariance between x and y. So stated in this form, the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality actually says that the sample variance of x times the sample variance of y must be greater than or equal to the sample covariance of xy or x and y all squared. So that's actually quite a useful result. And even though this isn't a direct proof of this, you can actually show that this also holds in the population. Hence, the variance of x times the variance of y is greater than or equal to the covariance of x with y, all squared. OK, so how do we actually go ahead and prove the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality? Well, in order to do this, we're going to define the sum over a particular expression. So we've got the sum from i equals 1 to the n of the sum from j equals 1 to n of xi times yj minus xj times yi all squared. So why have we started off with this expression? Well, it's not immediately clear, but this is actually going to yield something in the end, which is going to be useful for proving this Cauchy-Schwartz inequality. So first of all, what do I do? Well, I expand out this in a parenthesis. So I've got the sum from i equals 1 to n of the sum from j equals 1 to n of xi squared times yj squared minus 2 times xi times yi times xj times yj plus xj squared times yi squared. OK, so I've just expanded out that in a quadratic parenthesis. Then what we do is we notice that some of these terms inside the parenthesis actually depend solely on i and others depend solely on j. So for example, looking at this first term here, we notice that the xi squared only depends on i, whereas the yj squared only depends on j. And because of that, we can actually separate out each of these terms into their explicit y, or i and j dependence. And if we do that, we get that this whole expression is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi squared times the sum from j equals 1 to n of yj squared. And then if we look at this second expression, the xi times yi only depends on i whereas the xj times yj only depends on j. So I can write this as the product of two separate terms. So I get minus 2 times the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi times yi 
times the sum from j equals 1 to n of xj times yj. So that's the second expression here. But what about this last expression here? Well, that's pretty similar to the first one. It's just the first one sort of reversed in terms of the summation. So this is the sum from i equals 1 to n of, first of all, yi squared times the sum from j equals 1 to n of xj squared. Okay, so how do I work at this further? Well, to work at this further, we notice that the summation indices i and j are really only that. They're just indices which allow us to go through each of the terms in sequence. So I can actually replace the, all the j terms by an i subscript. So I'm now summing from i equals 1 to n of yi squared in this first expression. And then if I do the same for the second expression, I'm going to replace this j here with an i. And I have to replace each of the subscripts also with an i. And then finally, with this last term, I replace the j with an i as well. And this is going to give us something which is a little bit simpler because now essentially the first and the last terms are now exactly equivalent. And also each of these terms inside the middle product here are exactly the same. So it's going to be a lot simpler to work out. And this is going to enable us to prove the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality in the next video.